Hi, this is Kara, and this is DIY on the House. I have been working on crocheting a baby blanket using the log cabin pattern and I've been working on it doing trial and error and it's finally time to show you guys how to crochet an afghan using the log cabin pattern. This is what I have going so far. It's not done so I'm not going to give you the big reveal right now but it is far enough in the process that I was ready to show you guys how you can do this pattern. If you're no new to DIY on the house. Thank you for watching. But if you've watched my other videos, I hope you do know that it is important to me that we try all of the patterns first, that I work through all the bugs, that what I'm showing you is the real McCoy, and we're ready to do that. So I am going to show you how you can design and crochet a log cabin afghan. If you're not familiar with the log cabin pattern, here is a diagram that I drew on my graphic software to show you how come it is called log cabin. As you can see, the sides build on each other, sort of like a pyramid. Each row is a step bigger than the row before, but they're offset a little bit, and you can see on the corners, the way they intersect with each other gives it a really cool building effect. So what I've done is I have made a blank template for you, and I've made it into a PDF file. The link is down below. Um, it is on our website, DIYonthehouse.com. So just click on blog, and you can print out this blank diagram, as well as any of the other ones that I just showed you. Um, and you can color it in with marker, colored pencil, or write the word on it, and you can design your own log cabin. The pattern that I'm gonna use is one that I found on Ravelry. This is not a pattern that I created. Um, it's called Granny's Baby Log Cabin Blanket, and the link is down below and on our website as well. Uh, it's just a really good, solid pattern uh, that it starts in the center with a granny square and then builds out from there to do the log cabin. So I am going to take you step-by-step step on crocheting the pattern, following her instructions, and with that then you can design your own pattern. So this is the yarn that I chose to use. Uh, this is yarn from Hobby Lobby. It's their Baby B Sweet Delight. And again, these are the five colors uh, that I'm using. So again, I'm going to follow her instructions step by step. Uh, to start with, you need to make a slip knot. So I make my slip knot by going around my index finger and my thumb, twisting it and drawing up the yarn and I'm going to use a size F crochet hook. So you can um, pick your own weight of yarn and own size of hook, but if you want to do a baby blanket similar to what I'm doing, this is what I'm using. If you're wanting to follow along, go ahead and print out the, the pattern from Ravelry and follow along, because I'm just gonna take you step by step on how to do this. Uh, it says first we need to chain four, so one, two, three, four, and we need to slip stitch in the first chain to form a ring. So what that means is we are going to go into that first stitch and we're just going to pull through our yarn. Then round one, you chain three, one, two, three, and this says that counts as your first double crochet. So that's kind of um, important because I like to be able to understand why um, and that way you can get the pattern in your head a little bit more. So that's really technically your first double crochet and it says to do two more double crochets. At this point, the starting tail, I try to include that in my circle there so that the tail gets nice and hidden. So I just include that in my ring. So I'm supposed to do two double crochets. So there's one and there's two. If you need a refresher on what a double crochet is, you put the thread over your hook once, stick it into the center, and draw up your yarn. Draw through the yarn through two on your hook, and draw through two again. So now we have three double crochets. Your beginning chains one um, is one, 
and then two and three. Next we chain two. That is forming your corner. So basically now we're going to make the next three double crochets. They're calling this a three double crochet cluster because we're going to group three of them together. So there's one, two, and three. And now you need to chain two to make your next corner. So I'm just turning. Again, I'm just including my tail in my center uh, ring here. So now do three more double crochets. One, two, and three. Now we need to do one more corner. So one, two for the chains. And we're going to do our last side. So if you can see it all here, side one, two, and three, to make your fourth side, you do three double crochets. So one, two, and three. Now chain two for your last corner and slip stitch it in the top of your first chain three, which is counting as your double crochet. So I'm just going to slip stitch through that and draw through both and so now you have your beginning foundation of your granny square so there's three double crochets on each side chain two to form each corner so at this point you want to mark that this is your right side uh, which is important um, in a little bit so you can use a safety pin they actually make little crochet um, markers. I have a tub of little markers that you um, I, that I use sometimes for this. But for this one, I you can just take a piece of ribbon. So I'm just going to take a piece of ribbon and tie it uh, on my right side so that you know from now on that this is your right side. And I'm just going to cut the tails nice and short so they're not in my way. So now this is the right side of your project. So now we chain three. One, two, three. So now we're working on the wrong side of your granny square and we are going to do a two double crochets in the next chain two space. So they call this a double crochet, two double crochet cluster. So I'm going to do one, two, And I'm going to chain two for my corner. And now I'm going to three double crochet. One, two, and three. If you're like me, I like to get the pattern in my head. This chain three counted at my first double crochet. So there's one, two, three. I chained two to create my corner. One, two, three. Now in between your clusters, you just chain one. So I'm going to chain one and I'm going to do the same uh, rhythm again. Three double crochets. One, two, and three. I'm going to form my corner. One, two, and I'm going to do three double crochets. One, two, and three. I chain one on my sides between the clusters, so I'm chaining one and I'm going to repeat by doing three double crochets. One, two, and three. Form my corner. One, two, and do it again. One, two, and three. Chain one in between the clusters and three double crochets. One, two and three chain two for my corner and three double crochets one two and three and so now we have finished each each side and so I'm going to chain one in between and I'm going to slip stitch in the top of my first chain three so now we're on the wrong side because you're not, you don't see your ribbon tails. So this is what your wrong side looks like. I'm going to trim this tail down just a little bit so it's not in the way. And now you're going to continue this 
for two more rounds. So I'll, I'll just do the next round starting so that you can get the gist. So we chain three, one, two, three. I turn the project over. Now we're back onto our right side because you can see the ribbon there. And that first chain three counted as a double crochet. I'm gonna do two more double crochets, one and two. Okay, and I'm not on a corner, so I'm only going to chain one, and I'm going to do three double crochets. One, two, and three. I am on a corner, so I chain two, one, two, and three double crochets. One, two, and three. Okay, I have went around, I did my corner, chain two in the center, I'm getting ready to join up to the first one of this row. So I chain one and I slip stitch into the top of that chain three. So there are your three rows so far. So here's one, two, and three. And to make the granny square, we need to have four total. So we are going to chain three, one, two, three, turn the project over. So now you have the wrong side facing you. So again, the chain three counts as your first double crochet. So that's one. We need to do two more. So there's your three double crochets. Chain one to get to your corner. Do the same rhythm, adding two chains in the corners and one chain on the sides in between your clusters. So let me finish this round and we get to go on to the next round which is getting really fun by adding color. So I actually printed off the computer the pattern of what each square was going to be. So here again is the, the image that you can uh, look at on our website so that you can follow along. But I have chose uh, my first section to be violet on this side and violet on this side. You have your right side facing you and again you start with a slip knot and I'm, I have my violet and you start with this, the right side facing you, you start in the upper right corner of your granny square and join your yarn there. And uh, as I showed a second ago that you li I like to feed through my yarn, I don't feed a different color through um, the row below it, so my purple wouldn't show up wrong in the white, so I don't feed that through yet. So again, I'm just following her pattern and I'm, I join it and I'm going to chain two, one, two, and you double crochet in the first square, or in the first uh, hole in the corner, and you chain one and you do a three double crochet cluster in your next. So it's the same thing, you're doing a chain one in between clusters on the side. So there's three double crochets, you chain one, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, chain one. Now we are down to the last corner spot and so when you get across to the last one you do a two double crochet in that hole and that way and you can you can follow along you started with two double crochets so you end with two double crochets cuz as this grows i just kind of like to get the rhythm in my head so that each side is made up of four rows so we're going to do purple for four rows here just as we did the granny square for four. One, two, three, four. you're going to do your purple for four. One, two, three, four. the first row starts with two chains to begin with it your second row starts with a chain three. So we chain three, one, two, and three, and we turn our project over. And we do two double crochets in the first one. You chain one in between. Now you do your three double crochets.
and now you do a chain one and now we are down to that first hole on this first hole here you did two double crochets same thing at the end we do two double crochets I chain one and I end with a double crochet in the top of that first chain and now you're balanced at the end of your second row now you have started with um, a single um, on the ends you have two and you have uh, two double crochets in this cluster and three double crochets there so the first row you started with two chains the second one is three now we're back to two so one two you turn your project and now we double crochet in the first spot just one and we chain one and we do our clusters three um, in each of the middle ones so one two and three down here to my last spot I'm going to chain one in between and I am going to do two double crochets in the last spot again so you know you're marrying each other you have two and two and then three clusters in the center we started with two chains three chains two chains now we're back to three one two and three turn your project and we do two in your first hole chain one and three chain one and now we're down to our last hole we start with two double crochets that's what we're going to do again chain one and end with the double crochet in the top of the row below so there you have um, four rows one two three and four and each one is balanced I'm going to go ahead and snip my thread make it secure feed it back through because it is the same color right now feed it back through this first row down here this this uh, purple that I didn't feed through earlier I am now going to feed it through the side and top so that it can get caught on the next row it just makes it a nice clean project when you have your threads hiding in the same color so there you have you're on your right side because here's your little ribbon and you have your first um, section of your log cabin so if you look at my diagram this is actually turned sideways according to my diagram my first purple is there my next purple is going to go from this corner to this corner and so you want to do it you always want to crochet with the right side facing you so I'm going to turn my project so that it the right side is facing me and I am going to do my purple on that side the same exact pattern that I just did the difference though you have end rows now that you're working in so we need to pay attention to that so I have my um, project turned the correct way and I'm just going to slip it in, slip stitch in into that first chain. And we are going to start with chain two, one, two. And in that first, in this first space here, we are going to do one double crochet. And we're going to chain one. Now you're going to skip this row and you're going to put your chain three or your three double crochet cluster in this one so now we have one two and three and when I said skip this row this is the end of a row so I'm skipping this cluster there I'm at the end of that row and so I'm going to chain one I'm going to skip this uh, row here and I am going to go into the chain two space and do my three double crochet let me do one more so you, and then I'll lay it down so you can see a full view of what I just did okay so here we have we started with our chain two and a double crochet we chain one in between each cluster 
but these are your rows going this way, so we're going to skip your first row, do a three double crochet cluster, skip your next row, three double crochet cluster. Now you're back into your granny square, so let me finish this row. Okay, I'm at the end of the row and I, in my corner spot here, I am going to do a two double crochet cluster in that corner. We started with two double crochets, we end with two double crochets. Now you're going to continue your pattern just identical as before. This beginning tail, I am going to weave it into the row that I'm working on now. So when I come back around, it is going to get encased in my stitches. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and continue the next three rows and come back and show you the next step. Okay, there is the first section of your log cabin. You have your granny square and you have your two sides. Um, and depending on your design, these can be two different colors. I just chose to do this pattern, but you can do two different colors here. The sky is the limit on what you're trying to achieve. So if you look at my diagram again on the screen, you can see that the next section is going to be peach, and it is going to go from this side to this side, and then once I get the peach, peach will go all the way across the top. So to start with, you can have your right sides to you, and you uh, start in that upper right corner. Here we go, you start in the upper right corner, and you begin across, and I'm just gonna do this section here again so that you can feel comfortable with how you uh, do your end rows. So you start with a chain two, and we're gonna do one double crochet. We chain one, we skip that first end row, and we do three double crochets in the next. We chain one, we skip this next end row, and we do our three double crochets all the way across. And then you just follow the pattern like I have done previously on the other two lavender sections. Whew, my first log cabin afghan is done. I can't even tell you how long I have wanted to do this kind of a pattern. And it turned out even better than I imagined. The simplicity is fantastic. So if you ever have any questions um, while you're doing your project, please comment down below. I do um, the best I can to reply to all questions. And uh, check back often for other crochet patterns. And I have rug weaving videos. My husband has tons of uh, repair videos. And we just gratefully, from the bottom of our heart, are thankful for you watching DIY on the House.